and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah <coughs> to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. All right. Um, so he was filled with the Holy Ghost. He didn't put that in there. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, we could add that. In the spirit of a wow, wife. from from his mother's womb. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So he was born saved. Apparently. Mm-hmm. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean, though? If he had the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Did we talk about that or no? That's yeah. actually that's an important the, document. That is the that's a, yeah because yeah that's exactly we. If someone's we, born with the Holy with Spirit, the Holy what does that mean? He wasn't born by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it wasn't a virgin birth. <laughs> but he still had the Holy Spirit. Uh, but he had the Holy Spirit. Well, I mean, it says that Jesus in Jeremiah knew before he was in his mother's womb with a plan, a purpose, a destiny. So, I mean, he was already marked by yeah. God. I, I you agree. know, in his mother's womb. Yeah, it, it's. Where, where the scripture is silent, it's it's almost dangerous to add anything beyond that. I mean, he, he, he was filled with the spirit from the mother's womb. Um, I, I I just accept it for what it says. <laughs> I just accept it for what he for what it says. Somehow he received the spirit before he was born. Everybody just stopped because it does sort of make you think about. Yeah. But you shouldn't add anything to it because you don't. You just start speculating and then it gets all. Yeah. There, there's a scripture that says the, the hidden things belong to God. Uh, okay, <laughs> Jessica, how about if we... Oh, this is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> bad, bad timing? <laughs> well, I was enjoying a ginger um, mint. <laughs> I have fire in my <laughs> So... Uh, Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along the e- in years. The angel answered, I am Gabriel. Uh, I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words which will come true at the proper time. Okay. So he says, I am an old man. I would say he wasn't in his 40s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 56, and, and I'm not old. <laughs> um, so I don't know how old he was, but I suspect they were they were older than, than, than that. But anyway... Um, he didn't believe it, 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 it seemed so out of, it seemed so unreasonable for them to conceive a child that he didn't believe it. And so because of his unbelief, the angel said, this will be a sign that you won't be able to talk until after the child is born. And so he was mute for the entire duration of the pregnancy, um, which uh, which is interesting. So let's go on to 36 through 40. Okay. Um, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her in, in her old age, and she who was and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. Keep going. Oh yeah. I'm the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to, to town, to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. That's it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And then uh, it, it goes on. All right. So, so what we find out is that the angel appears to Mary... 
but that's six months later. Okay, so the angel first appeared to, to Zacharias, later appeared to Mary, and Mary is told that she also is going to have a child, but it's going to be a child of the Holy Spirit. And the angel tells Mary that Elizabeth is already six months with child. So, so Mary goes to visit Elizabeth. Uh, and let's keep reading verse 41 through 45. <clears throat> when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored uh, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in the womb left for joy. Uh, blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. All right, so so there, the baby leaps for joy. The baby is filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth, I, I think it also said Elizabeth was filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And they start prophesying to each other. Um, Elizabeth prophesies to, to Mary, and Mary prophesies to to uh, to Elizabeth, or she sings a, a song, a prophetic song, at, at least. Okay. Um, 57 through 60. Now Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was on the eighth day that they came to uh, circumcise the child, um, and they would have called him by the name of his father Zacharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. But they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to the father what he would uh, have him called. And he asked for the writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And that's what they wanted. Okay. I read too far. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it's all good. We could keep reading to verse 80. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good stuff there and it's all about John um, and all all of this is stuff I'm sure you guys have read before and you you already know about it but but this is to help give us a good picture of who this guy was John was born and he was raised under the teachings of his father a, a very godly man a priest and he learned I'm sure he learned all about the Torah and the Talmud and all the important Jewish holy books and scriptures and he was probably being groomed for the priesthood, but his parents being old, there's a good possibility. I don't know if you if you guys have ever really thought about this, but there's a good possibility. The scripture doesn't tell us. There's a good possibility that they perhaps had died while he was still a child. Um, we don't read anything about John's childhood. We don't read very much about the childhood of Jesus, but we really don't read anything about John's childhood. But one theory is the reason the reason John lived out in the wilderness and ate wild honey and, and locusts is because he perhaps was raised by the Essenes. Are you guys familiar with the Essenes? Um, the uh, he dwelt in the desert, and he is believed to be at least one theory is that he was a member of this, the Essenes, perhaps. Perhaps raised by the Essenes. E S S E N E S, I think. That's right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so the the Essenes was an ascetic group that that uh, they were Jews, but they were, and I believe they were descendants of of the Levites also, but they were they were fed up or disillusioned maybe by the worldliness of the priesthood and so last year we did church history and I we talked in, in church history we talked about the monks um, we, we talked about how certain religious people formed monasteries and lived a life of a monk to withdraw themselves from the world and the Essenes I kind of see them as Jewish monks okay they withdrew themselves from 
from the world because of all the worldliness, but they also withdrew from the religious world, the Jewish world, because of the worldliness that had entered into even the, the, the Jewish system. Um, but they are responsible for the Dead Sea Scrolls. There, right. at, at this point in history, there was probably, it's believed that there was about 4,000 of them, and they're responsible for the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls were 981 documents that were discovered in the mid-20th century, and um, John's, the, the way he's presented to us in Scripture, it looks like he might have been one of the Essenes. And, and since his parents were very old, it, it could be uh, logical. The Essenes were probably the more godly of the Jewish people. They were probably more godly um, than many of them. So... Um, I put in your notes that his life was characterized by a rugged, in, as a rugged individual in the wilderness preaching the word. And he's a forerunner of Christ. There are prophecies in the Old Testament. Just like there are prophecies, a lot of prophecies, we talked about, I think, last week, prophesying the coming of the Messiah. There were also prophecies in the Old Testament foretelling the coming of the forerunner. Um, there's at least one in Isaiah, there's at least one in Malachi, actually I, I think there's two in Malachi, one in chapter 3 and one in chapter 4, uh, talking about the forerunner to Christ. Um, so, Matthew chapter 3, let me read, okay, so, so in Matthew chapter 3, what we read in Matthew 3, now we see John as an adult, we see John involved in his his ministry in chapter 3 and in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for this for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare you the way of the Lord Make his path straight. <clears throat> and the same John had raiment of camel's hair and a le leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. All right, and it, it goes on about Pharisees and Sadducees coming out to see him, and many came to be baptized by him. So he was impacting, uh, he got criticized by a lot, but, um, but he also baptized many of them. Okay. A lot of these scriptures we're not going to take time to read. Um... But there are a lot of a lot of scriptures on your notes that we could look at. Um, let's see. So John John clearly was the forerunner of Jesus, and the, Jesus said in chapter eleven that he referred to Jesus as coming in the spirit of Elijah. Actually, there is one more, at least one more. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, Susan, could you look up this one? There is one more, one of these that I want to look at. I'm not really sure what, which one it is. Well, so. you have on your notes, he came in the spirit of Elijah, Matthew 11, 7 through 14, and John 1, 21 through 23. Well, let, let's go let's go just a little bit further. Okay, so you want John 1, 19. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, there, there might have been something there that I wanted. I think there was something there that I wanted to talk about, but I don't remember what it was. So, okay. so Susan, John 1, 19 through 23, Annette, Matthew 11. We, we can split that up um, unless you want to read all seven verses. Is that all right? We can split it up four and four. It's actually eight verses. Let's do it. What? Four and four? Or, okay. Annette, how about if you read seven through ten and then Frank read 11 through 14? <laughs> 
and um, we do. We'll see. We we may not we may not go we may not get into those. It, it, I may find what I'm looking for in these verses. Okay. Now this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? He said, I am. <coughs> the voice of one crying in the wilderness makes straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Elijah, I mean, uh, Isaiah had said. Okay, so he's quoting. Th this is actually the one that, that I was thinking of. I, I was, wasn't sure which reference it was. but Okay, so, so John in my opinion, probably had been preaching for several years at this point, and he's grown significantly in popularity. And people are asking him, well, who are you? Are you the Messiah? He's making such a big impact that some people think that he might be the Messiah. And But he, he says, no, I'm not. And he, they ask, are you Elijah? He says, no, are you that prophet? Because... Um, I think that's a reference to, there's a prophecy, well, Moses, I think it was Moses that said that somebody, another prophet will come similar to me. Yes. And so that's probably what they're referring to, what, what Moses said. Um, and John said, no, I'm not. But John said, so they say, well, who are you? And he says, I'm the one um, crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. So in other words, he's he's announcing that he is the forerunner of Jesus. He's the one calling people to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Okay. Um, all right. So let's look at uh, the reference in Matthew 11. All right. All right. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. Those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Okay, so this is Jesus talking about John and speaking very favorably about him. Okay, uh, verses 11 through 14, Frank. <laughs> i got to read these. i got to go to these for a minute here. Yeah. You're, you're a good reader. We should have you read yeah. all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you read better. Oh, my God. You read better than keep that right here. Yeah, it wrote. <laughs> I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. For the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, and forceful men lay hold of it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. He who has ears, let him hear. Okay. A lot of deep stuff there. <laughs> so so this is what Jesus was saying about John. He is the Elijah. He is the forerunner. He is um, and he, the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. But the least in the kingdom is greater than he. Uh, we're not going to look at the... Let's not look at the references in John, but in I think it's in John... I think it's in chapter 3 where where John the Baptist, his disciples, because, you know, after when Jesus, it's chapter 1 where Jesus is baptized by John and and many of, and, and G, John declares, this is, G, this is the Christ, 
that this is the Lamb of God, whatever he said, uh, that takes away the sins of the world. And when he announced him, you know, you know, he's saying, this is the guy I've been telling you about, that he was going to come. Well, this is him. Some of John's disciples, probably several of them, stopped following John and started following Jesus. So a lot of, you know, so, so some of... The library will be closing at 9 o'clock in about 25 minutes. If you need to arrange for a ride, please do so now. If you are checking out materials today, please bring them to the checkout desk. If you need help finding materials, please come to the information desk. If you are planning to make copies or to print from a computer, this is very helpful out. information for the live streamers. Thank you. Friday, September 9th, the library will be closed for system wide training. What? We will be open free? Saturday at 10 a.m. Copies? No, it's they charge 15 cents per copy. That's cheaper than that. In, in Loudoun County, it's 10 cents a copy. Um, will you start again with the I last don't, thought, Kim? I don't remember what what was my last thought. Um, Some of the the uh, followers of John switched okay. over to follow Jesus. Yeah, we read about that in um, in John chapter one. We know that at least from Peter's brother um, Andrew, and you know he he went and told Peter and. And some of the other disciples were followers of of, uh, of John 2. So much so that when we get to John chapter 3, we read about how some of John's disciples expressed concern. Hey, have you guys read that? They, they approach John and they say, well, your, your followers, your, your, the people are following Jesus now. It's like the disciples of John are concerned that John is losing his popularity to some other preacher. <laughs> Maybe we should read that. Yeah, let's go ahead and read that. Um, let's let's skip to John chapter one, um, and it's twenty five through thirty six. We don't necessarily need to read all of that, but how about Jace. if Jace we're just going to have Jace read? Yeah. <laughs> Works for me. You know, this is interesting yeah. because it's like an old covenant, new covenant transition. Obviously. Yeah, it's a transition from the old covenant to the new covenant. But I think it's very interesting that John, John's. <laughs> it's it's the it's the, the the attitude that the people had that you know John, there's a problem. The people are leaving, <laughs> and and ultimately John says, well. I've been saying this all along that the greater one is is going to come and and that uh, I must he must increase and I must decrease is ultimately what he ends up saying. But go ahead, Jace. All right. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, referring the to one, Jesus, the one you testified about, well, he is baptizing and everybody is going to him. To this John replied, A man can receive only what he has given from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said I am not the Christ, but I am sent ahead of him. And the bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. Okay. So... So John had the right attitude. I mean, he knew it was all about Jesus. It wasn't about him. Mm. It's not all about who who can get the bigger crowds. <laughs> he uh, also knew it was about the bride too. Yeah, he, he knew the he he, he he was the know, friend of the bride. Because see, we see we all we look. He actually knew it was about the us. Amen. Yeah. About us. Jesus. I mean, Jesus, yes, but about oh, us. I'm the sorry. Christ. Yeah, it's, it's throwing pins at other that, students. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, well, I guess I might have to roll and roll his phone. phone. Uh, no, 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 pick yeah. it up. Oh, that's like, crazy. I actually, I didn't even realize that was. Yeah, because he goes to the bridegroom. That's right. He, that's yeah. interesting. That's how, really uh, good. That's a really good thing to pull out. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. You know, he's like looking at Jesus all the time. Jesus is like, you know, I'm there with you. <laughs> He's not, you know, you, there's something deeper for us to be seeing. Yeah. His concern was more for his bride than yeah. himself. That's mm -hmm. true. Amen. Amen. All right. So as we go through here, we see that salvation is, if we were to go on to verse 36, it tells us that salvation 
is found only in Jesus Christ. And so God, God had sent J John to preach about repentance and to baptize people in water um, instead of serving in the temple as a priest, as his father did, he dressed in camel's hair garment and leather belt. He ate locusts and wild honey. Um, he told the crowds that they needed to repent and that the kingdom of God was at hand. Um, he knew that somehow he knew that he was called to fulfill prophecy or the prophecy was being fulfilled in him referring to himself as the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare you the way of the lord and when religious when religious leaders of his time came to see him john showed courage and he rebuked religious leaders for ignoring god's message of repentance Religious leaders believed that they didn't need to repent since they were directly descendants of Abraham, uh, directly descended from Abraham. And John pointed the people of Christ, uh, people to Christ regularly. And when the time came for Christ to start his ministry, John pointed his disciples to Christ and encouraged them to follow him. So, uh, and... On the, the second page there, John even baptized the Lord, which we talked about that uh, Jesus came to John to provide an example for all mankind by being baptized. And after John baptized Jesus, he was privileged to see the Holy Spirit descend upon John in the form of a dove. Jesus. Uh, uh, yeah, descend upon Jesus. Thank you. Um, this confirmed to John that this was indeed the Son of God. But yet, even though he knew Jesus to be the Son of God, even John was human, and he doubted later on. You guys know that story, right? When he was thrown into jail, there apparently was some level of doubt because he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one? So even though he had been proclaiming him to be the one, perhaps he believed, like many others believe, they were expecting Jesus to come and set up overthrow. his earthly king yeah overthrow the 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 political system and and reset up the kingdom of jerusalem a lot of them had um a faulty understanding of what the messiah would do which is one reason why i don't get too excited about eschatology because i i think a lot of people are Amen. convinced beyond any doubt that their view is right um and they were convinced <laughs> two thousand years ago everybody was convinced on how Jesus was going to come, and they were, they were all caught off guard, or most of them were. So, you know, but as far as eschatology goes, I just had a question: Is there a way that we could say we may not understand all four, but we can at least know that like preterism isn't the key? Just curious, does that matter? Um, so you're opposed to preter preterism. And what does that mean when you say that? Well, yeah, that's a rabbit trail. Let's not go there. Yeah, you know. we need to get a definition. Well, like the stuff Lynn Howes teaches either. about end times. I like a lot of things Lynn oh, teaches. I like you too, as far as types and shadows, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. See, see, this is one reason why I don't get to. I don't want to get into eschatology because there, I see. If you listen to one view all the time, it's very easy to be convinced of that. And then you hear another view, and you think, well, that that makes sense. So, you know. Right. Well, the idea that they had was in the First Corinthians or First Thessalonians, where it says, "The Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of our, our archangel, the trumpet of God, and all this stuff." They're saying that that's totally not speaking about the resurrection or end times or anything. That's you take in the preterist view. Yeah, that, yeah. And then, and then, of course, the very next chapter, it says that these times and seasons, you don't, you don't need to know yeah. because it's coming as a thief of the night. And, well, the, the preterist view is basically that most of that was fulfilled right. in 70 AD. <laughs> right. Um, and it's not it has nothing to do with the future. It's all in the past. Right. So there there's uh, certain things well, which they, I they, think they, were fulfilled. But it has to do with the resurrection because they say that's actually experiencing Christ. Now, I'm going into the cloud, the cloud speaking of the 
think cloud and fall is real. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of ideas in there that I just thought that maybe stuff like that. It just makes sense to to squash if it's not you know. Yeah. Legit. But I'm just this is a rabbit trail. Let's go someplace else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do, yeah, we need a whole class see, on that. So you 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 can see why I don't want to talk about eschatology. <laughs> All right. I'm in the same boat, I agree. <laughs> but I would like to have a class on it okay. from the standpoint of that we can go back and see what the scriptures say. So we can well, look at what people it, say it, if we, and then look at the scriptures. Well, if if I were to <laughs> teach, if I were to teach, now if, if the Lord lays it on your heart to teach something, we can talk about that. But if I were to teach a course on eschatology, it would be basically, like I said, like I did last time, I would show you the four major views, and maybe subdivide, like the futurist view can be divided into pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, and perhaps other perspectives too. So even though there are four major views of, of, of how to interpret the book of Revelation, there are divisions within each view, you know, as far as the details, but just, just my my teaching of it would just be to let you know what the four major views are, so that when you hear a word like preterist, you know what what it's talking about, um, you know, and that type of thing. But but I don't want to be emphatic because I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like I, I said, totally I I can see some truth in each view, and I can see a lot of holes in each of the views. So so we'll figure it out as the Lord reveals it to us. And then at the end of the day, we should just be ready regardless. Yeah, yeah. You know, it still doesn't change what we do. That's right. You know, Amen. Make disciples. Okay, so skipping ahead to Roman numeral three, the arrest and execution of John the Baptist. John the Baptist didn't pull any punches. He called sin, sin, and he criticized King Herod for marrying his brother's wife. Now, this King Herod is the son of the King Herod that... that uh, that, that yeah was killing all the babies. Um, John was thrown in jail, and after spending some time in prison, in a prison cell, as I was just mentioning, John sent some of his disciples to Christ. He wanted to receive confirmation about the work and mission of Christ, and you can read about that in Matthew 11. We won't look at it right now. Um, maybe he was expecting Jesus to start conquering instead of letting him remain in jail. Maybe he was expecting yeah. some kind of a... Um, supernatural deliverance from jail. I don't know. But while John was in prison, Herod, Herod threw a party. Herod's wife was Herodias. Herodias had a daughter that danced at Herod's party. The dancing pleased Herod so much that he promised her whatever her heart desired. Uh, she, uh, being prompted by her mother, said, give me John's head on a platter. And I have the reference for that on there. Um, Herod was sorry, but because of his oath, he felt trapped into ordering John to be killed. And I put there that this is the son of the other Herod. This is a type of shadow hidden in here. Yes, it is. Okay. Because of his oath. Type of shadow. I'm not, not hidden in here, but I'm seeing now in the story of John that there's even a type and shadow of that and how he even lost his head. Let's continue. I'm sorry. Do you want to elaborate on the type and shadow? Okay. No, All right. Think about it. Pray about it. Okay. I see All something right. there. All right. See that joint? It was see, an you should be teaching. You did a lot of stuff in there. Just, just like the word. You read the words, but there's so much underneath all of that. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. There's like layer the after point. layer after yeah, layer. Really I think we'll be... We'll be learning throughout eternity. Yeah, we should. Things that, that was there all the time, but we just didn't see it. Um, all right, well, I put like a, uh, a summary here, and I also put a link there that I thought if we had time, we would look at that link too, a little bit about John, but we won't have time for that. I'll just read through this paragraph, and these four paragraphs, and then close. There are many reasons for the story of John the Baptist, uh, the, many reasons it was recorded in the Bible. It still speaks to us 2,000 years later. His life story and his message point us to Jesus Christ and show God's miraculous power. John the Baptist's story also shows us an amazing example of humility. Throughout his life and ministry, John always directed people to Jesus Christ. When talking about Christ, he said, 
He who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. The job of carrying sandals was the job of the lowliest slave, yet John didn't deem himself worthy of even the lowest of the jobs. That was actually a cultural norm there, for the slaves to carry sandals? Apparently, to carry uh, the, the sandals. Um, to John, everything was about the Messiah, whom he had been commissioned to prepare for. John saw of his own needs and, stat and status in life as unimportant. He was not jealous about the crowds going to see Jesus. Instead, he humbly said, he must, decrease, he must increase, but I must decrease. The work of John the Baptist also reminds us that God has a detailed plan that he is carrying out. Though we, like John the Baptist, may not understand everything about the plan that or our assigned part in it, we can know that God has a plan for us. Herod might have killed John the Baptist physically, but John will be a king and priest reigning on earth in the kingdom of God. And that's reference in Revelation about us as being kings and priests. Um, and that link there in YouTube, it's... The library will be closing in seven minutes at nine o'clock. If you are checking out materials today, please bring them to the checkout desk at this time. We will reopen Saturday morning at 10. Saturday morning? Saturday morning? Like that movie. Probably tomorrow. Like that movie, the library. All right. So, so if if you want to know more about John the Baptist, that that that's a sermon, like forty seven minutes long, all about John the Baptist. And it, he, uh, I I like the sermon, and I was going to show like the last ten minutes of it if we had time, but we don't have time. But you can watch it yourself. But he 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 gets into talking. He's actually, if I remember correctly, it's a Calvary Chapel preacher, but there, there's an emphasis on the finished work of the cross, which I thought was, was interesting, uh, that he inserts into the sermon. Um, but next week we will be at the studio, and then the week after.